Okay, thanks for clicking on my next video. This is going to be out of Carol Rothman's book, which is a book about bowls, but she also has some faces. And this was a this is a jar. She calls this ginger jar, and I guess the difference between a base and a jar is you have a lid on a jar. This also has a base that's different. She tried to copy, uh, or she did copy a, a project that she saw, I think a ceramic bowl. A ceramic jar. Uh, anyway, th we're going to try to recreate this. I'm going to try to recreate her work with it. So this requires several blanks and several patterns. I got three blanks here. They're all the same size. It's uh, all uh, maple. And then I got this small blank, which is also maple. And I got two blanks of purple heart. And this purple heart is going to be this one's going to be the base. This is going to be a ring between the base and the jar. And this one is what we're going to use to make the little neck and the lid, and the lid that fits over the neck. Uh, I've also got several patterns. you got one set of patterns for, you got two sets of rings. This is the one set of rings, and then you got to make the other pattern uses a center, you make a center ring, and another set of rings. And then with this one, of course, you, like I said, you make the lip in the jar, uh, the lid and the base, and then there's a ring between the base and the jar. So first thing I gotta do is I gotta get my center lines on these and get me some tape on them, get my center lines, some out the pattern. I'm gonna start with the first set of rings, which you use uh, this pattern right here for the first set of rings. And you cut that, cut it using that. I think the, I got the angles all written down over here. Uh, use 20 degrees on this one. And then you use the first ring to make the second ring. And I think there are three rings. So you use each, each ring to mark the next ring on this pattern. And then the other pattern, you just have one center piece and then another set of rings with that. So it's a lot of cutting, a lot of gluing, a lot of lining up. There's going to be a lot of sanding before I get through, but uh, that's just part of this project. Uh, and like I say, this one, you got a got another pattern for this one. You're going to mount that pattern and cut that and do a compound cut on these outsides right here to get a little curved foot on the bottom. So and that's, that's pretty hard to cut. That's very dense purple heart. And it may be difficult to cut. She used teak. I don't have any teak. And I wanted something to get a contrast. And that was the best thing I had in three quarter inch. So let me get some uh, lines drawn, uh, tape put on, lines drawn, and patterns mounted. And I'll get over the scroll saw and I'll start cutting this up. And as I film this, uh, we've got a hurricane coming in. I'm in... I'm fairly well north of the coast, but it's coming right across us. We could lose power any time, so I don't know for sure when this video will be up. Uh, of course, the time you hear this, be, if, if it does go out, it'll be back. I just may be delayed getting this done. So it's really dark outside, but I'm going to get as far as I can with it. All right, so I got all the uh, patterns melted, uh, mounted. Uh, got two of these one of these, and then uh, the uh, neck and the lid, and then this is for the base. That's going to be multiple cuts on that. And then you got these patterns that you're going to use on these pieces that you cut out as in a compound cut to make the little curved foot. So this one is going to be the ring set one, what she calls it. And it's uh, the bottom rings for the for the body of the, of the jar. So I'm gonna cut that first. And you have two of these, and one of these you just cut the center ring out of. And the other one, you will cut the other set of rings for the top. And then with this, cut the neck and the lid that will fit on top of that. And then of course the base that will, and you got this piece doesn't have a pattern. What you're gonna do is <clears throat> take the bottom set of rings and use that as a pattern so this will match. So I'm gonna go over to the saw, get me a new blade in it. I'll start out at 20 degrees. I believe all of these rings on this first set are cut at 20 degrees. 
Um, and then the set two will be cut at 34 degrees. And that's most of the angles. That's the only angles you're going to use on this. You've got a lot of cuts, but not many angles. Uh, like I say, there's three wings for this one. And I'll have to get back and look at that. I think there's two or three rings on this one, on the second one. Anyway, I'm going to start with this and we'll cut this set. I like to refresh it as I go every time before I start a blank. I'll go and reread the directions, make sure I got the right steps with the right blank. So let me get my saw set up and we'll cut this, start cutting on this. All right, I got the table of the saw set at 20 degrees. Got me a new number five blade in it. And I'm just going to cut this out side ring there, the outside circumference first. I'm going to drill that entry hole at 20 degrees. I'm going to do that all the way down to we get, I uh, believe, three rings. So let me start this and drill some holes and we'll move along to try to get this first set of rings cut out pretty quickly. Okay, I got the first ring cut. The blade, or the uh, bit flexed pretty bad in that one, but it didn't turn out too bad. What little mess up is going to be, be internally. Uh, but it didn't flex as much in this one. I, don't, I think it drilled pretty straight. So I just took that first ring, marked all the guidelines on the inside so I can line it up when I can assemble it. And then I used it to draw this next ring. So I'll cut this out and do the same thing again, and that'll be this set of rings done. All right, cutting the last ring, did the same thing. Used the previous one to draw this pattern. The bit flexed a little bit in this one. I believe it flexed inward on this one. Uh, I'm not sure how much. It's not real bad because the blade didn't have a lot of trouble getting started. So we'll uh, cut this out and then see what it looks like. Okay, there's the first set of rings. This is the bottom of the jar. I got it lined out. It's matching up very nicely. And I'm going to take the patterns off, match the rings up, and glue them together and sand them. And that's the next step she has in the book. So I'm almost going to follow her steps. And it's a lot of cutting to do at once if you're set and cut every bit of this. So I'm going to break it up with sanding and constructing. So let me get these patterns off. Uh, match the rings up, make sure I don't need to flatten them or whatever. Get any gaps out of them and I'll start gluing them up. So I got the inside of it sanded. Came out very nice and smooth. This maple sanding very nicely. It's fairly hard, but it's leaving a nice surface. And I'm gonna glue the base on it. Yeah, I got it marked. 
I'll line that up, glue it, and put it in the press. While that section is in the press, I'm going to go cut this center ring. That's the next step. I'm going to cut around the outside of it, drill an inch or hole, and cut the inside of it. This middle piece we're going to save. Uh, it's going to be part of the top. So I'll go back and put my uh, scroll saw table back at level. And that's, this is all cut at a level. And it's really getting stormy outside. The wind's blowing and the rain's really picking up. So could lose power any time, so I may be delayed a few days with this, depending on what happens. Okay, so I've got the bottom of the jar sanded inside and out. That's just a preliminary sanding, lining everything up. There'll be some shaping to do later. I've got the center ring cut. It matches perfectly. It's going to be real, well, real good fit. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the upper set of rings. So There's actually one ring and a base. And so this is cut at uh, 35 degrees. I've already got my saw set for that, and I got a new blade in it. I've really been working that blade hard through this maple. Now, for this pattern, she intended that you use the center piece cut out of the center ring. But it's a big piece of maple. I'm going to save. I got this scrap maple. I just made this pattern. I made this little blank to put this pattern on. So we're going to cut the center part and then cut right here. And that's going to give us this as the throat of the jar, the, uh, the lip of the jar that the lid goes over. Then we'll glue this, <clears throat> what's left, to a piece of quarter inch and cut around the outside, then that'll give us the lid. Okay, I've got this piece of quarter inch glued on the bottom of this. We'll cut around this. That'll give me the lid. Then that'll be smoothed over or what have you. Make it nice and clean and neat. So let me cut this out. The lid will be done other than a little sanding. Well, this is the second set of rings. There's actually one ring and a base. And I'm going to glue these together. And then that's going to be... Got these... That's the center ring and the bottom set of rings. And this goes up here. And we're going to use this lip to uh, cut our hole in there. And then we've got a lid that goes over it. And then we've got to shape all this. That's kind of what we've got left, plus make the base which is going to be four compound cuts and pretty dense wood. But uh, right now, I'm going to glue these two together.
Okay, I've got the top ring assembly glued together. I've taken this piece right here, fit there and draw on the inside of it. I'm going to take that the saw and cut it out straight up and down. Then we'll glue this on and do some sanding, make everything match up. And uh, then we'll start gluing. We'll glue this center ring to this piece and then glue the whole thing together. Got the uh, this little piece lip glued on and rounded it off. I've sanded it inside so it all fits. Now I'm going to glue this center ring to this piece. This is the steps according to her directions. Now I may be missing some steps here. I'm, I've kind of lost my uh, trail here on this on this video because I've had some interruptions. I had the hurricane. Uh, knocked the power out just a few minutes after I said it may have knocked the power out. But for that, that killed that day. And then I had to clean up some damage the next day. And then so yesterday I had, I went up several miles north of us here. My uh, brother was just put in a nursing home up there. He's got dementia. So I went up to check on him. He has no real family other than me. He's my last sibling. And, uh, so I went up there to see what I could do or help out with. He has a, a girlfriend that's really helping him a lot. So uh, that killed a whole day. And so now I kind of lost track of where I was. I, I think I, I'm getting back in the right place. I may have to do some clever editing on this video to get it right. Anyway, the next step for me to do is to glue this on right here. Uh, and while that, that's gluing, then the next step will be to glue the whole thing together. And while that's gluing, I'm going to start working on this base. I've got the lid made. I need to do some finished sanding and smoothing it off. Got around the top of it over and all that sort of thing. But uh, again, I'm going to cut this on the outside like this. And then I'm going to split it in these four sections. And then we have for each one of those sections, and they've cut it off right here too. I've got a compound cut to make on those. I've got to drill these holes. And it's going to be a fairly tough cut because it's a very dense wood compound cut, but it's not real thick, so I don't think it'll be too hard for me to cut. I'm going to go with probably with a number nine blade, and uh, that'll be the next cuts I'm working on while this gluing is taking place in the background. So let me get this this glue joint started and get it set in the in the press so it can be working while I go cut that other part. So that's the initial cuts. I got the uh, outside cut and then got it split <clears throat> crossways. And I've marked them top left, top bottom left, right, and I've, I've marked with squiggly and straight lines and different ways to make sure I get them back in the same place. Uh, this is the bottom of the left. That's the top of the left. And I have the others marked similarly so they match up. So now I'm going to cut the center part right here. And then we'll put the patterns, the uh, compound cut patterns and drill a 3 8 hole in the spot designated and then we'll do a compound cut on all four of these. Okay, so I've basically misunderstood her directions on this compound cut idea. We have another pattern, two, two copies of a pattern slightly different from this that I thought we were going to apply on the other side and cut in both directions, but that's not the case. The other pattern, she calls this a compound cut because you've cut it this way, now you're going to cut it this way, but the other one was an alternative pattern. You can use all four of these, you, uh, this on all four of the sides, or you can use the other pattern on the other two sides and you have a little different uh, base for the jar. This is a little more decorative. You can put it on all four sides. I'm going with this one since I've already, uh, I kind of like the way it looks, so I've already started in that direction. But this is not a real complex cut. I just got me uh, some 
pieces of scrap and some clamps here to help hold it because it's a small piece and it's fairly thick going through that way. So I'm going to slowly cut this out and uh, it's not, not real difficult but it's thick and it may I'll try to grab on me and jump it up and down so I've got this to help me. Now I just have to do that three more times. That worked pretty well. Uh, have to tighten those clamps as you go because you take some of the material out and it wants to slip but it worked real well. I think it's going to be okay. So those are all cut, got them glued together. What I do now, I'm going to cut that little line right there, I'm going to cut those off and then I'm going to uh, sand it and smooth it around. I only got one more cut to do after that and that's, we'll use the bottom of the jar to cut, to mark that and then we'll cut it at an angle which will set on top of this and then the jar sits on top of that. But. Uh, other than those three, those little shortcuts, and I'm not going to film those, are going to be real quick. Uh, the only other thing is all sanding, and then this cut, of course, and uh, gluing. But i got to shape the uh, jar itself. It's put together. I'm going to take it out of the press here in a minute. I'm going to go over the sander with a flexible pad sander, and i got a lot of material to move on that. So let me get a little bit of that done, and uh, I'll kind of show the process as I go. I cut those corners off at the scroll saw and then I went to the belt sander and I just rounded it over. That's just a preliminary rounding. I'll get over to the uh, drill press with a flexible pad sander and ease all these corners out here and kind of smooth that over and, and finish that off, make it a little better. But I get it, did the rough, rough work with it on the belt sander. So I'm going to get the uh, jar itself now. And we'll get that. I'm more, I got to round all this off and all around here. So I got a lot of material to move. It's going to take me a little while. So I'm going to get started. Okay, well there is the finished ginger jar. Uh, this was a difficult project to make, not because it was in itself difficult. I just had a lot of interruptions, a lot of problems, uh, loss of power, had to make a trip, hey, take care of some business. Anyway, I did manage to get it finished. I'm running really late this week. But that's my version of Carol Rothman's ginger jar. It's a vase made out of stacked bowls with a lid. And the, the base is a little different. Uh, that wasn't too difficult to make. It actually worked out pretty well. So it, it was different. I'd never done anything exactly like that before. But it teaches you techniques on different things to do. So anyway, I hope you like that. If you do, hit the like button. 
not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. I'm kind of winding down on bowls. I'm not going to ever quit making bowls. But I've got some, uh, I'm going in a different direction, but I need to take a break, get a few other things made. I've got some birthdays coming up. I need, need to make some gifts. I'll probably, I found a unique box I'm going to make. Uh, and I've got some ideas to make it even more unique. Don't know if it's going to work, but we'll see. So, if you like this kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button. And if you like this one, hit the like button. Uh, I really like this little project. It was fun. Like I say, it's got its own challenges. And then I compounded that with outside problems. But anyway, yeah, I got it done. I'm running a day behind, and that's not too bad considering everything I went through. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.